Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. My name is Mike Riley, the founder and editor of journalisttoolbox.ai, which you see up on the screen right now. Uh, this is a uh, resource site for journalists who are interested in using AI tools to uh, create uh, content. Um, you can go in and open up any of these pages. We've got it organized by video and image creation, audio, data tools. Um, and you can open these pages up and then you'll find a lot of tools in here, most of them free. Uh, also training videos embedded in them, uh, much like this one. Um, also uh, lists uh, free tools as well as paid tools and typically what they would cost. Over here on the right rail, you'll see uh, we have a training page. You can uh, uh, get training uh, if you want me to come in and do a training session for you. Uh, training videos. I've got more than 90 training videos up there. It's fantastic. Uh, free YouTube uh, page. Uh, and also, uh, it's got my Twitter handle as well. Um, and you can uh, follow me on Twitter uh, at It's Mike Riley. Um, and I'll follow you back. Uh, and also, uh, we have a newsletter that comes out every other Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. Uh, and it's a free Substack newsletter, uh, journalisttoolbox.substack.com. Uh, they're about five, six minute read, has a lot of training videos, tips and tricks in it, things like that, uh, that center on AI tools uh, for journalists. So I uh, just wanted you to know that that uh, is a resource there for you uh, and it's free. Uh, so take advantage of it. Um, today, we're going to work with uh, a page of exercises on Journalist Toolbox AI, uh, this bit.ly link here, bit.ly slash toolbox AI. So go maybe hit pause and go to bit.ly slash toolbox AI. All right, welcome back. By now, you should have this handout open, bit.ly slash toolbox AI, bit.ly slash toolbox AI. Uh, and we have a series of exercises on here that I use for many of my trainings. And you can scroll down here uh, to exercise number five. Uh, it starts uh, right around the top of page four, just a few paragraphs in. Uh, and the tool we're going to work with today is called Claude, Claude.ai, C-L-A-U-D-E dot A-I. So if you want, you can open that up. It's a free tool uh, and you can log into it. Uh, I use my Google credentials to do it. So you can see me logging in here. So if you want to hit pause again uh, and actually set up your account, feel free. Um, if you already have one, just go ahead and log into it. Uh, Claude is a tool that was built uh, by a brother and sister combination that left OpenAI, that built ChatGPT, and they went off and started their own uh, uh, company and, and uh, uh, built this tool called Claude. Claude does uh, uh, many of the things ChatGPT and Google Bard and others do, and I frankly, I think it does it a little better. But one thing it does that the others don't do a real good job of is including uploads. Uh, you can add files uh, up to five at a time of 10 megabytes each. Um, chat GPT, you can do that with certain plugins, but not re on regular GPT, at least not right now. Uh, Bard does allow some uh, uh, files to be uploaded, uh, but uh, Claude allows you to do much more with it. And we're going to show you kind of what distinguishes it here. Um, so go ahead and uh, set up your Claude account and we'll get started here in just a minute. Okay, by now you should have Claude logged in and uh, we can get started here. Uh, it can handle up uh, a document up to 75,000 words. So you can upload a pretty good sized document to this uh, uh, tool. Um, you can uh, send prompts to it. And I've got a few uh, highlighted here on the handout that we'll play with in a minute. But I wanna start with this exercise down a little lower on the page, PDF analysis in Claude. Here's a link to a little folder. It's got a bunch of documents in it. So we're gonna open that up. So go ahead and click on that. And there's this analyzing bridges for Claude exercise right in the middle of the page. Go ahead and download that. Just hit the little download arrow button here and it'll download. It'll go to your downloads folder. And I'll show you what this uh, uh, spreadsheet looks like. The uh, uh, It's a spreadsheet that's been saved as a PDF. Um, you could do it as a CSV file, as a spreadsheet as well. Uh, but this came from the uh, Federal Highway Administration's bridge inspection database, their bridge inventory database. And it's got a list of every state as well as, uh, you know, Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands and Guam. D.C. is in here, too. Uh, and it lists all the bridges for each city uh, or each state, uh, how many are in good, fair or poor condition. Um, it also gives it in square meters as well, how, you know, because bridges vary in size. You know, some states have bigger bridges. Uh, the others have smaller bridges. 
So you can analyze this data in a spreadsheet, equal sign, sum, equal sign, average, and, and come up with uh, some data analysis and to see which states had the most uh, bridges in fair condition or most in poor condition. Or we can do it, you know, divide it by the total number of bridges and almost do it, you know, per bridge uh, uh, average, where I can add fair and poor together and divide by the total number of bridges in that state and come up with, you know, what percentage of bridges, all the bridges in that state are in fair to poor condition. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to drive across a bridge in fair condition. I want one that's in good condition. <laughs> um, so it's got all the data here. Um, and what I can do is instead of putting it into a spreadsheet and having it uh, calculate using formulas, I can upload it into Claude and just ask it questions in plain old English, uh, and it, it'll answer the questions for me. Um, so let me find my handout, uh, Analyzing Bridges for Claude exercise right here. Hit open, and it'll upload in here. It's sitting right in there, the PDF. And now I can start making queries with it. I can start asking it questions. And I'm going to give you a few to, to work through. And I've actually done these in the spreadsheet, so I know the answers. We'll see if it gets it right. I always double check and make sure. So I'm going to tell it to analyze this PDF and tell me which states have the most bridges in fair condition. So we'll go in here and we'll see. Just paste it in. Or you can write your own if you want to word it a little differently. And it'll start calculating. Pennsylvania, Ohio, Illinois, New York, Michigan, California, give me a top 10. It shows totals as well, which is nice. Let me know if you need any additional information analyzed from the PDF. Well, yeah, I'd like to do a little bit more here. Why not? So I've given you another prompt. Tell me, which, tell me the five states that have the most bridges in poor condition. This is just the raw number, not uh, you know, not a, a percentage of the total bridges, but we'll get to that in a minute. I always keep my prompts very short and simple, especially when I'm doing the initial analysis with a, uh, a spreadsheet or a PDF, um, mainly because uh, I, I like to get it warmed up a little bit. So it's you know doing some basic analysis and then uh, I can do something a little more complex like we're gonna do now. This one prompt, this last one, tell me the states that have the most bridges and fair and a poor condition combined as a percentage based on the total bridges in that state. So this one takes a little more language. And I'm going to drop that in there. We'll see what we get. It could stumble on this. But we'll see if it comes up. Rhode Island should be pretty high on this list. Yep, there it is. And it gives me the percentage breakdown. Pennsylvania, Iowa. It gives me the math here, which I like too. It adds the two together and then divides it by the total number of bridges. And it gives me the percentages. Um, so you can, you know, this is a good story for your state. If your state's showing up on any of these lists, you know, this is a pretty good little analysis for you. So, uh, you know, keep that in mind. It can do some really, really amazing things. Um, and I, uh, what I'm uh, talking about here is, you know, this PDF is something that I'm familiar with. It's, it, you know, it's a document that, uh, it has been fact-checked. It's coming from an official source. Um, it's not something that, you know, I just pulled off of Wikipedia, you know, and I'm not using garbage in, garbage out, which we often use in data journalism. You know, you have a bad spreadsheet, you put it into any, you know, uh, graphic making software, you're going to get a garbage looking graphic, you know, garbage in, garbage out. But here, you know, you can use AI to analyze something that we, you know, know and trust instead of having, asking it to write a story or something absurd like that. We can ask it to analyze something. The other thing it's good at is it's good at editing. Now, uh, BARD and, and ChatGPT can do some of this as well, but I've found I've had better luck uh, with Claude as far as editing, you know, for grammar, spelling, uh, and AP style. Uh, AP style is programmed into this, so I can tell it this prompt, edit text for uh, Associated Press style and spelling, and I'm going to give it three paragraphs here, and I've e edited some uh, you know, $40,000, I spelled out 20 instead of two zero, used an ampersand down here. We'll see if it catches everything. Uh, when I do this in uh, uh, Google Bard or ChatGPT, it usually misses some things uh, and even edits a few errors into it. But we'll see how Claude does here. We'll see if it can pull it off. Okay. $240,000, two zero, fix the and. Uh, oftentimes too, it, it will list uh, the changes it made down here. It didn't on this one, but oftentimes it'll give you a little bullet, bullet point list of all the changes 
uh, that it made. It looks like it, it caught all. I'll do a, ask it to retry and see if it'll give me the list. The second time through. Nope, it didn't. Um, again, sometimes you'll get it. Sometimes you won't. Uh, the actual checklist of, of changes. Um, but uh, again, it went through and fixed the, the copy. So if you're in a hurry and, and doing some editing and don't have time to go through word for word, uh, ask this to go through it and uh, you know read it on the back end. Uh, and you know, you've got a nice clean edited uh, copy. Um, so that is Claude, um, really great tool. I've got some other prompts up here, um, uh, things that you can ask it, you know, give me an explanation of something and how it might be relevant to me as a blank, you assign it a role. Um, so I wrote this prompt here. Can you give me an explanation of post-concussion syndrome, how it might be relevant to me as a medical journalist? Um, and I'll change reporter to journalist so it doesn't get confused. Sometimes uh, uh, if it's a uh, uh, reporter, it'll assume me on court reporter or something like that. So you have to be real specific with it. Let's see what kind of result we get from this. I don't do a lot of these. So let's see what I get. I want to see if it cites any sources. Usually it does. I don't see any so far. Maybe it will at the end. It's pulling some research on it. And again, fact check anything that it gives you here. Um, so, uh, you know, didn't cite any sources, didn't attribute anything or give me a link. And, and often it does. Um, so I'd be a little skeptical of this one. Let me hit a retry and see if I can get something a little better from it. This one's a little better. It gives me a bullet point list with some statistics in it. But still no attribution. So I would be a little skeptical of this result. Um, you know, uh, I, I could ask it to maybe another uh, way of doing this. Um, please, and I'm always nice, I ask it, please, please cite sources and attribute information. And we'll see if it reacts a little bit differently. This is where you have to kind of tinker with your prompts. Many times your first prompt that you write uh, isn't going to, you know, uh, provide the results. Ah, now we're starting to see according to the CDC. It's giving us the data again. It's got some citations. It looks like one, two, and three in here. We'll see if it gives us the numbers at the bottom with the citations. It sure does. So you have to tell it, you know, sometimes it'll just give it give you these citations without asking for them. But here I actually had to force it to, to give me the, the answers. I mean, this is usable. Um, you know, it cites our sources. We can go through here and, you know, it's like some, some uh, good medical journals and the CDC in here. Um, so again, uh, you know, some good quick research right at our fingertips. Um, it's also good at generating code. Um, if you're tired of looking up things in code libraries, uh, as, as I am, um, and this is always a big help to my students too, to be able to look this up, you know, be careful and, you know, with the code that it generates. Some of the early versions of chat GPT, uh, some of the code had malware in it, um, but I'll see what it gives me here. You know, get, ask me for a login page uh, uh, in Flutter. Yep, it's giving me a color of a button here. And this would be like a welcome page and you could go in and fill fill in what you need, specifically what you need with it. Ask for a password. It's for a simple login page. I can also ask it, you know, create an HTML table that is five cells wide by 10 deep. And if anybody's ever had to code HTML pages in the early to mid 90s, uh, those HTML tables pretty much saved us uh, back in the day. And there we go. Table open, table rows open, table data, and then you can put your information between those table data. And that's a 10 row table right there. 10 row by uh, four column table. Yeah, that's, there you go. So it'll do coding for you. Um, it does make mistakes. So, you know, be careful with it. Um, it doesn't do everything for you, but, you know, I've demonstrated a couple of pretty good uses for it here. Um, so take advantage of it uh, and use some of the other exercises on this page, journalist or uh, bit.ly slash toolbox AI. Hope this was helpful for you and we'll catch you on the next training.